السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Last week we briefly looked into the narrations and the ayat encouraging to encouraging us to rush towards goodness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us فَاسْتَبِقُ الْخَيْرَاتِ Right. In another ayah, he tells us, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ right. is Hasten towards goodness, hasten towards maghfira. Rush towards competing and doing good things. Many times we don't know when, you know, our, when our last moments will be. Or we don't know that if we make an intention and then that intention may be gone. <coughs> On the same topic, this, today's narration, Abu Hurair radiallahu anhu, he narrates that a person came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked a very crucial question. He says, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu sadaqati a'adhamu ajra? That which type of charity has the weightiest ajr, reward, the greatest reward? Which type of sadaqah? And it's interesting how he didn't say which, which sadaqah or what thing can I give, but rather which type of sadaqah. Showing, and then the Prophet Wasallam's answer is such that it shows the condition of a person. It's not the amount, it's not, oh, is it gold or is it silver or platinum or this or that. It's not focused on the item, it's focused on the condition of the person giving it. Not what's being given. Right? We focus on the amount. You know, a person says, you know, I have to give, if I'm going to give sadaqah, why would I give, you know, 10 cents? Or why would I give a dollar? I need to give, you know, 50 or 100 or 1,000. Know, because we think the amount is what matters. It's not the amount. It's the intention and it's the condition that our heart is in, our mind is our mentality when we're giving it. So the Prophet says, that a person gives sadaqah in which state? In the state that you are sahi, meaning that you are healthy, right? Shahi. You are in the state of stinginess or greed, meaning that you're, you feel like holding back. Why? Takshal faqr. You're worried about you know, poverty. You're worried that, you know, if I'm going to give it, you know, how am I going to pay the bill? Or how am I going to, you know, do this or that? وَتَأْمُرُ الْغِنَى And you have hopes and plans of becoming wealthy. A person in this state, when they give charity, this is the best charity. This is the best charity. Because this is the time when you want to hold back. To do something when you want to do it is very easy. It's much easier than when you don't want to do it. And if we look at the state of the Sahaba, when they were giving sadaqah, what would happen? They were, they were in a state where they didn't have anything to give. Right. They didn't have anything to give. Many times the munafiqeen would make fun of them because they would be giving like date seeds. You know, it comes in the narration, Aisha radiallahu anh, she gave half a grape. Imagine someone were having a fundraiser and someone shows up with half a grape. Everyone's going to laugh thinking it's a joke. But they understood that it wasn't the amount, it was the intention, and it was the state that they were in. They knew that we are not in a state to give. But if we give, Allah is the provider. Allah is going to reward according to what we're giving. That's why if a person has a dollar and they give 10 cents, it's much more valuable than a person who has 100,000 and gives 1,000 or 100 bucks. The amount is much more. But it's the state that a person is in. So the Prophet ﷺ says, Sahih, you are healthy, Shahi, you are in that state of greed, right? Takshal faqr, you are worried about uh, you know, poverty. Wata'mul ghina, you have hopes of getting wealthy. And we think that you know, if I give sadaqah, or if I give something in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it might hinder my path of success. Right? So, and then he says, these are the conditions. <laughs> then he says, that, وَلَا تُمْهِلْ حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَتِ الْحُلْقُمْ and don't delay giving sadaqah. And this brings it to the chapter that we're on of delaying goodness. That don't delay, delay until the soul reaches the vein, the, to the throat. And by then it's, it's too late. 
Then a person says, you know, then you say, Kulta, a person says, Li Fulan Kada wa Li Fulan Kada. The Prophet was saying that now this person is saying, you know, uh, this much is for this person and that much is that for, for that person. And, you know, I'm being very generous because, you know, I'm, I have terminal illness now and I know I, I, what am I going to do with all this wealth? And so I start giving it out. The Prophet says, Waqad kana li Fulan. That, that, was, uh, that, that stuff that you're giving out now, it's already been passed out. It's already going to be passed in the inheritance. You can't give it out anyways at this point. So there's no point. There's no point of giving it right now. The time was before. And this is why uh, when we look at the, the seven categories of people who will be under the arsh, one of them is the, the youth. The youth that connect with the masjid. Why? Because when you get older, you have no, no work, no, nothing to chase. Like Then it's easy to come to the masjid. Much easier. But a person who has everything else to worry about in the world and they're still dedicating their time to the masjid and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is valuing that on the day of qiyamah. He's granting them guaranteed shade under the arsh. So this is a mindset, not only regarding sadaqah, but this is a mindset that we have to apply in anything. When we're in a state that it feels it's hard, that's the time to do it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward accordingly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all. Ameen wa akhru da'wan. Alhamdulillah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك اللهم انت السلام منك السلام تبارك يا الجلال والاكرام جز الله عنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم بما هو اهله اللهم اته الوصيله والفضيله والدرجه الرفيعه واجزه عنا ما هو اهله واجزه افضل ما جازيت نبينا قومه ورسولا عن امته وصل على جميع اخوانه من النبيين والصالحين يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اجرنا من النار اللهم أجرنا من خزي الدنيا وعذاب وعذاب الآخرة اللهم قنا عذاب القبر وقنا عذاب الحشر وقنا فتنة المسيح الدجال لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إن كنا من الظالمين اللهم أدنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأدنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم طهر قلوبنا من النفاق وألسنتنا من الكذب وأعمالنا من الرياء وأعيننا من الخيانة فإنك تعلم خائنة الأعين وما تخفى الصدور اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر إخواننا في فلسطين اللهم حر المسجد الأقصى اللهم احفظ حرمين الشريفين اللهم إنا نسألك من خير ما سألك منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما استعاذ منه نبيك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وأنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين برحمتك